So today we're going to talk about Ubuntu's 2204 LTS. That is supposed to release today, uh, unless they find something that they need to fix and delay a little bit more. But let's jump in a little bit and talk about it. So Ubuntu 2404 is a long-term release. That means that the lifetime that it's supported is longer than what just came out last October, which would have been Ubuntu 2310. So those typically are only supported for nine months, whereas LTS is generally supported for five years. So if it's released tomorrow, the support date for this particular version, 2404, will end in June of 2029. Now, there are some flavors that do not go the full five years, and you'll need to check the README for those. A flavor to Ubuntu is that would be a new desktop. It might be a particular use case like education, or it might be science, or it might be something along those lines. But those all have different uh, support plans. The, I, I think there's some of the flavors that are considered official Ubuntu releases and some which are considered community. So generally, the community ones will go for three years, supported by Canonical, and then for the last two years, it will be uh, supported by the community. So you still get five years, but that's generally how it works. Uh, so the uh, 2310 users should be able to upgrade shortly after the release of Ubuntu 2404. But if you're on 2204 LTS, you won't see an upgrade notice until August the 15th of 2024. And the reason for that is most people want to wait until there's a patch version that fixes all of the last minute bugs that didn't get into the final release or as found, you know, during the course of people using it for the first three, five, four or five months. So when you see Ubuntu 2404.1, then you should be able to upgrade your Ubuntu 2204 through the uh, standard uh, upgrade process. You can always, you can always force the upgrade. So well, we talked about flavors a little bit, but what flavors are there? Well, the first one is the Ubuntu desktop. That's GNOME 46. There's also Ed Ubuntu, or that's an educational uh, flavor that is geared toward children. And Kubuntu is KDE. Now, in this version of 2204, it will be KDE 5.27.11. And I did validate that with the beta. We'll see once it's official, if they actually support 6 or not. I'm going to guess that will probably be taken uh, into account later during an upgrade process, probably in August. Ubuntu, which is uh, LXQT. There's also Ubuntu Budgie, which is, of course, using the Budgie desktop. There's Ubuntu Cinnamon. I'm not sure what version that's used, and I did not download it and check it. There's just too many of these. There's uh, Ubuntu Kylin, which is the UKI uh, desktop that is generally for the Chinese market. Uh, Ubuntu Mate uh, is Mate 1.26. Ubuntu Studio is an AV graphics uh, flavor. So if you're doing audio visual uh, or you're doing professional level graphics, you might want to take a look at that one. Uh, they'll have curated applications in there for your use. Ubuntu Unity is the Unity desktop, and Zubuntu is XFCE, and that's currently version 4.18. So what are the system requirements for Ubuntu 2204? First of all, you'll, it, it has a wide support for architectures uh, like AMD 64, which also, of course, includes Intel 64-bit. ARM 64, IBM PowerPC, that's the PowerPC 64EL. Also, IBM Z and Linux One, which Linux One is part of 
IBM's Linux uh, operating systems for their mainframes. There's also Raspberry Pis, and that's a 64-bit. There's Risk Five, which is Star Five, Vision Five, Two, as well uh, as some of the others. The minimum requirements now, again, I don't have the latest ones, and we won't until it actually releases. As of 2310, they were a CPU du dual core x86-64. You needed 4 gig of RAM, 25 gig of disk space, and 1024 by 768 resolution or better. What exactly is new in Ubuntu 2404? There's a net plan in the 2310 release. Net plan replaced the uh, old network manager. So, and now NetPlan has some advantages like uh, this version 1.0 supports simultaneous uh, WPA2 and WPA3 connections. It also supports Mellanox's BF lag for SRR IOV network connections, and it also supports VXLAN improvements. So, and Firefox, by the way, is now a native Whalen application. So some security features is Ubuntu 2404 now has the ability to require applications to have AppArmor profiles in order to use unprivileged namespaces. So unprivileged namespaces, that's a feature of the Linux kernel, and that can be used to replace many of the older uses of set UID and get UID programs, which have caused problem in the past. Uh, but there's also issues with anytime you have unprivileged user namespaces on your system. So you might you might want to check into that, read about it first, make sure you know what you're getting into before you enable it. The base application versions are Firefox 124. That's probably going to update to 125. LibreOffice is, again, it's good. you're going to jump from 7 to 24.2. And that's because the LibreOffice team has switched to uh, using the year as part of the version. Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbird is uh, 115.2, and that is a snap-only application. Blue Z is uh, on the uh, subsystem is uh, 572. Cairo is uh, 1.18. Network Manager is still supported if you want to use it. It's 1.46. Pipewire is 1.0.4, Poplar is 24.02, and the XDG desktop portal is 1.18. So those are pretty recent. Ubuntu does uh, make changes to the Linux kernel. Now, if you're interested in the full changes to the 6.8 kernel, you can look at the Fedora uh, article. I'm not going to recover uh, those here uh, yeah, they're, they haven't changed <laughs> since then, but some of the specific features, though, is there's new app ar armor and stacking LSM patch sets. I believe that uh, the extra low latency power saving settings are now available in the generic kernel. So if you're trying to, you know, you're trying to get as much uh, life out of a battery on your laptop as you can, you might consider doing that. Uh, there's also, you can rely on the object tool to enforce retpoline ABI checks. Uh, the default value of one uh, VMX map count has increased to 104.85.76. Though that was added because some games are needing that in order to run. We'll look at the tool chain, but I'm not going to read through all of those. Uh, yeah, there it, it is an updated uh, list and... It's similar to the one that Fedora uh, has in theirs as well. So why don't we why don't we do a walkthrough and check out some of the features of 2404? So let's uh, let's get started with the walkthrough here. Let's uh, let's take a look first of all at what our options are. We have we do have Xorg available to us as a session. So I guess some of the rumors about, you know, removing that permanently are, are not true. I moved this. Normally it's the Ubuntu uh, dock is, yeah, along the left-hand side, but I prefer mine on the bottom. 
uh, and I stretched it across so that the apps are way over here on the right hand side. I can get rid of that. And that's the CD ROM for the installer. The app. So you'll notice that this has got uh, quite a few more apps in it uh, than than we saw in uh, in the base uh, Fedora Silver Blue, uh, and they just include more curated apps for you. And, and of course, I've added a few like this one, but uh, yeah, for the purposes of being able to benchmark this, let's see if the other locations works the same. We'll see if it'll. Yeah, it does. Still don't see NFS drives. Help Center. It's a nice guide uh, for the... This is GNOME, of course. I always start with the flagship for the distributions. This, These color highlights here, you can change those in the settings. So if you go to Appearance right here, you can you can change it to let's just move this out of the way so you can see change it to green or red the Ubuntu color <laughs> or purple or a kind of a a deep uh, a uh, iridescent purple I guess which is where I had it so yeah you can pick and choose whichever color you want for your highlights. So we're taking uh, about 42 gig. Now, remember, I have, in, now that, that's not what the baseline install takes. Uh, if I do a, just on what I have installed here, it's 30 gig. So you can infer that that's about 12 gig for the base install, plus the apps that I put on. So it's probably a little under, I'm going to guess, 10 gig or so from out of the box. The reason why mine has 30 gig in it is because there are sample uh, video files and also the Blender, uh, uh, the Blender benchmarks, which uh, are quite large. So, yeah, as you can see, is this taking up 30 gig? Now, normally, my, your, my home would be pretty empty on after an install. So let's see. Well, what do we have? In memory, so 1.17. Now I've got a few things up, obviously. Let's shut down a few things and see what happens. Ooh, didn't really return much, did it? It's 119 tasks running, uh, 381 threads. Let's look at glances and see what the app cache has taken. 1.32 gig used. So that's not bad. Um, let's see what we get here. We have a 59 score here, and that's really low. That's probably the lowest I've ever seen. And so that kind of went, whoa, what happened? So I scrolled up here to the top and it says that you have one or more vulnerable packages installed on the system. I had to actually dig into the log to find it. Uh, and this is what I found. It's right here. You'll notice that um, there, so there's a CVE that's open on that version number right there, 561. And you'll, you'll also, as somebody else pointed out uh, in the reply, that, that it's really 5451. You know, the, the, and they said, well, this is a false positive by Linus. No, this is not a false positive by Linus. Linus uses a left to, a left to right parser. And a left to right parser, as soon as it gets its match, which is going to be right there, it's going to stop. And it's going to go, wait, you've got a 561 version of XZUtils out here. I can guarantee you that, um, that Linus will not be the only one that picks that up. Uh, Bart will too. Uh, yeah, there's a number of uh, <laughs> checks for looking for CVEs. Uh, there's also the CVE checker that will probably fail on this too. I don't have it 
installed on here. But uh, uh, yeah, so that's not a false positive. That Linus is doing its job correctly. What we have here is an incorrect use of versioning. Uh, and so I, I don't know what their reason was behind this. But if it's really 5451, then what in the hell are you doing with this in front? Because the rest of the, see this plus sign right here? That's probably going to be taken as a comment uh, by anybody that's checking any of the uh, automated features that are looking for uh, packages that are installed with open and known CVEs. So just for your edification, uh, yeah, the CVE was against 5.6.0 and 5.6.1. So, Abante, you really need to fix that and put it back. Do it Do it the same. I don't know why you would do this. I, 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 maybe you have version dependencies in your build. But whatever the reason is, uh, that's, that's not the right way to handle versions. Sorry. If you look at Debian, Debian, uh, they just say it's 545-1. I think they actually have a couple other modifiers in there uh, for the patch levels. but So I'm going to see if this has been updated. Since, no, yeah, it's the same as when Fedora look. It definitely looks like a Mac. And, and of course, there are there are some preferences you can set here, like if you prefer a uh, a stack chart for your CPUs, you can you can do that as well. File systems that are mounted, and this looks very similar. Same thing here. Of course, you would kind of expect it to be right. I think that's all I'm going to look at. I. Uh, and let's take a look at the benchmarks. And of course, if you saw the uh, video from uh, Fedora, you can skip this part because it's exactly the same. All right, so let's let's take a look at the at the uh, benchmarks here. On this one, I'll just compare this with Fedora. As I get, uh, I have again changed my benchmark strategy around. So I'm attempting to test more applications. And then more of processes and threads that are executing in the kernel to kind of stress uh, the kernel out and uh, and see how well it performs. So uh, we're still doing some benchmarking, but not not to the level that we were doing before. So yeah, these are just doing uh, it's just doing basic tests, read write kind of things with the file system. Now Fedora. Uh, in this version is using XFS, but uh, Ubuntu is using EXT4. Uh, so the harmonic mean of the, um, they're pretty comparable and the same with the maybe bytes, although they kind of flip. See Fedora's on top slightly and then uh, Ubuntu's on top slightly, which that's true. If you do well here, you don't necessarily do well on the MIBI bytes. Harmonic mean of bytes per second test results is uh, here. This would be the result of the disk test. And then the BOGO ops, these are, this would be your CPU basically. And they're pretty close. Uh, Ubuntu edges out just uh, a slight. Yeah, slight lead, but, you know, that's down in the noise. Mean of all the tests, yeah, Ubuntu is uh, slightly faster, but, again, it's pretty close. Yeah, you could, I bet you if you ran this about four or five times, this would probably be up here, this would probably be down here, depending upon how the uh, how the system was reacting and running. So, uh, C compiler test, about dead even, I would say. CPU massive tests, yeah, Ubuntu does a little bit better. Even though this is being tested on exactly the same machine, remember that Ubuntu will go in and do customized changes to the kernel. So, yeah, they will. They will go in and tweak it in order to get more performance out of it. 
create a workload test. So yeah, so now we're starting to look at things like Blender. And the encoding test, this would be like the X264 and X265 tests. Uh, HPC tests, now <clears throat> these are definitely dead even, but then they should be. <laughs> it's, it's the same GPU on the system. Uh, common kernel benchmark tests, these are stress tests for the kernel. And Ubuntu edges out. I mean, it's slight. I mean, it's, yeah, that's hardly... That's hardly worth talking about. 6.7% different. So, yeah, mean uh, machine learning tests, they're dead even. This would be TensorFlow. And memory test is, there's a couple of them that run here in order to test memory. Uh, they're similar. The geometric multi-core tests, uh, Ubuntu edges out Fedora. These are really close. And if you remember last time, I measured Ubuntu against Fedora. There was no contest. I'm going to do uh, a comprehensive file system review and we'll single threaded tests, uh, dead even. So I, I think you're going to get tired of this. So yeah, they're, they're the 50, it's about 50 50 split between the two. Uh, Ubuntu maybe has a slight edge. As you can see here, it's 51% versus 49, yeah. And then same on the on the flip side where we have 51%. Somebody's got to be first and somebody's got to be last when you only look at two of them. So, yeah, look for this to expand over time as we're evaluating things this year. And my final thoughts. So we've had a kind of a, a chance to take a look at Ubuntu 2404 LTS. I've kind of gone through some of the philosophy, some of the changes, and some of the things that might be important to you to look at. Uh, and so we covered that. We also went through the system requirements, some of the tool chain, and then we started talking about a walkthrough. We kind of looked at some of the key features that I always look at, plus we looked at a few things that are new in the Ubuntu side of things. Then we looked at the benchmark, and that shouldn't be too surprising because uh, right now I only have two, uh, yeah, two distros in it using this new methodology. So kind of I changed that at the end of last year because I felt like we needed to have more application or app, application testing in there as well as maybe stressing the kernel a little bit so yeah this, this is we're moving over to a it's a it's a more rigorous test there's about 51 was the original test that i used to use and now it's 80 it, they take about the same amount of time yeah four and a half hours versus five so it's yeah it's it's not really adding on a, a crazy amount of time to do the benchmarks so and then we kind of we kind of looked at um, we looked at the results and they they look mixed but they're similar to Fedora. I haven't seen this where both of them line up like this. Now realize I did change the file system on Fedora. There was some rumors that came out last year about a bunch of going all snaps. Those have proven to be unfounded. They have not. The uh, applications that are in the App Store are all snaps. But you can still install from the APT list to get traditional Debian packages if you prefer. And with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna conclude with I think it's I think it's a good release whether or not you decide to use it depends on what your needs are. Uh, it is traditionally uh it was traditionally a good place for beginners to start out, but my personal preference is I think you would be better off if you're starting out with this to use Linux Mint, which is also based. So with that, I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today, and I hope to see you again in the next one, and bye for now.